Doctrine and Devotion is sponsored by Logos Bible Software. You know that we love Logos Bible Software, and now you can love it too. Head over to logos.com slash doc and devo for some free Logos Bible Software. Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast exploring Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I'm the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jimmy Fowler, executive pastor at Redeemer Fellowship. What's up with your uh, with your keyboard? I, you know what? I don't want to talk about your this. Your keyboard is weird, man. You've got like the most awesome iPad. The, iP- the new iPad is awesome. The iPad yeah, Pro. It, it works great. Yep. It's really cool, yep. man. And the case that you got, I like the case. Yeah, the, the case, case is, cool. is great. I love the case. I don't know what's up with the keyboard. It's I weird. I went for something compact. Something it's flat, definitely compact. Something that... Uh, size of a credit card. So Yeah, what is it's something that you thing? can... Uh, put in your front in your pocket. Bag. And your back pocket. It actually does. The picture was like, oh, you can put it in your back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there you go. Uh, but it's also, you could spill water on it. Ash, all that. Ash. <laughs> <laughs> I can drop my cigar ash all over the cigar it's ash. Fine, you know? Totally fine. Yeah, you know, it's okay. So it's taken a little bit getting used to. The more and more, though, I'm like, oh, okay. It works fine. It's working pretty good? Yeah. Nice. I like it's, it. It's more silent than that. Oh, yeah. This thing's like. Yeah. It's, it, yeah. Ooh, <laughs> oh, see, you that's just. That's quiet. That's quiet. Now I want it. Exactly. I was making fun of it before, but now I, I kind of like now, it. The part that I'm, I'm not happy with is I thought this was, even though it's compact in size, I thought the keyboard layout was full. Obviously, no numerical, but I'm talking about. Yeah, actual width actual, of a regular exactly, standardized. Exactly. Yeah. But no, no, I was wrong. No, it's all right, though. You got you got big fingers. So, exactly. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. I need I need <laughs> even full size keyboards. I'm like <laughs> hitting two or three buttons at once. So you know, uh I I I I, I just want to apologize, Joe. I just want to apologize to you. Good. Okay, yeah. Um I kind of went behind your back. What do you mean? Lately, you and I have been in a canasta stump. This is not the, no, first of all, it's a slump, not a stump. No, no, it's a stump. No, it's a, no, no, it's exactly. a bloody stump of a game. Okay, that we're, well, all I'm saying is this is not, nobody cares. It's not relevant to the podcast. No, but this as, is not, nobody no, cares I, about Canasta. No, but there was a public, I, I sinned publicly and I need to confess and repent. Okay, all right. Okay, I'm, I'm ready to forgive you. What'd you do? Uh, I played with Steve yesterday as my partner and we rocked. That's because Steve's good. I can't say I don't deserve this. Uh, I know you're angry because you're I'm not saying, angry. I'm not angry. Uh, I'm not angry. <laughs> sounds like you're because you're saying things that are untrue. No, that, that's not, Steve's good. Are you saying Steve's not good? Not not better. Than I me. didn't say better. I just said that's because I feel good. like you're trying to hurt me by saying that Steve's better than me. No, listen, you're hurt. You did hurt me by playing with Steve and, and you've winning. never played with Steve, right? No, but I don't win when I play with Steve. Wait, well, so wait, you you play Canasta behind my back with not Steve? Behind your back. I'm very open about it. I thought, saying, I thought we had an open relationship when it came open, to Canasta. Open Canasta relationship. <laughs> okay, so when you play with Steve, you win. And when I play with Steve, we lose. I get it. I know but what you're, you're saying. Hold on. Maybe when you say like, you know, maybe he's better. I almost, I almost pulled a you in the first round. As we're playing, mm-hmm. we're holding it. It's everything. It, the pile's frozen, right? right. It's going around, going around. Mm-hmm. And I forget to put down. And the... I got lucky. There was only one. It got to be with one card left. Oh, you almost didn't lay down your cards when you should have. Okay. Yes. yes. Yeah, I don't do that. I no, don't know. You don't, do don't, 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 don't make me look bad. Come on. I, right. I look bad enough. <laughs> so, got Fundy's so, coming after us. <laughs> news articles about how pagan we are because we smoke cigars or whatever. I know. Uh, but you know what? Hey, I, I, will, I was encouraged this week, though. You know, hearing that, you know, because Joe, Joe's been getting some uh, – it's been discouraging. I would say discouraging, yeah, you, just, know. you know, but uh, about, you know, us and the, or particularly you, unorthodox persona. You, you have an unorthodox you persona an, too. Uh, you have, look at you. Oh gosh, because I'm Hispanic. Is that what it is? No, no, what? not gosh. at all. Then what no. is it? Then what is it? Because you have long, like Samson hair. Mm-hmm. You like Samson. That's oh, so biblical. Yeah. But no, Samson was, wasn't very biblical. Now was he? But he's he in, was rather he's unorthodox. In there. He's a, so Satan's in the Bible too. I'm just saying, like he's unorthodox. Biblical. <laughs> but no. But I was encouraged though. I was talking mm. uh, with Chris Sheffield, uh, the new owner of Watch, uh, Righteous Wretch. Yeah, yeah. And so he was sharing with me about a uh, a student in his student ministry. I think he's either a sophomore or a junior named Cameron Watson. Yeah. That 
listens to the podcast, dives in, has been growing. Cool. Uh, and he's been really encouraged by seeing kind of his faith. Oh, that's nice, man. His, his faith, you know, yeah. progress, right? And so, uh, you know, for every 15, you know, fundies that we hear, it's incur. Wait, that doesn't sound good, does no, it? No, for every one fundy. For every one fundy. We've got 50 Westons or whatever his name is. Yeah. Preston. Watson. Kevin oh, yeah, Watson. Same thing. Yeah. 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 But That's cool. I don't you know, know if we have 15 of them, but uh, at least we got one. Got, we got one, one, wait, it's a one to one ratio at this point. Okay. So 50 50. 50 50. We're, <laughs> we're, we're 50 50, uh, you know, encouraging. All right. So, Watson, listen up. Um, we're going to talk about John Bunyan today. Yep. And we hope it's an encouragement to you and to everybody else because we love John Bunyan. Mm. John Bunyan, uh, great preacher and uh, 17th century. Puritan Baptist guy, uh, he, total metal. He was full on heavy metal, had long flaming red hair, looks like Dave Mustaine from Megadeth. Mm. Nothing to not like about John Bunyan. John, if you don't know what, who we're talking about. Megadeth was, was good. Megadeth, in fact, Megadeth was awesome. And then. I guess, sorry, I just put that a tangent little, They got a little wonky. They got a little, got a little wonky, got, there. Got a little yeah. wonky later on. But then on. he was converted. Dave Mustaine was converted. Yeah, yeah. And their music started to come back. And man, their last album was tight. Really, mm. really good. Love that. So to kind of put Bunyan on a, a history timeline, here, here are some, some reference points, right? So Jimmy, what happens in 1611? We, we, we know, like, especially some of those fundies that, uh, that aren't like necessarily our biggest. Some of them. Well, yeah, uh, the only, I mean, the only, uh, uh, approved right. Bible. The, the authori- it's authorized. The, the authorized yeah. version of the Bible. It's the official. KJV. It's bona fide. Mm. The KJV comes out in 1611. 1618, that's when the Synod of Dort uh, begins. Uh, 1628 is when John Bunyan is born. And in 1688 is when he dies. He has 60 years on this planet. Of course, 1689, you all know what happens that year. That's the, not only, you may not know, that was when the Toleration Act was passed in England, mm-hmm. which allowed Baptists and dissenters to uh, put their names on publish their dissent opinions so we've got the second london confession in 1689 coming out so that kind of tells you where john bunyan is on the large timeline right yeah i mean john bunyan was born in 1626 in elstow england to thomas and margaret bunyan uh, thomas was a tinker or a tinsmith who traveled around fixing people's metal household utensils the bunyans were not a poor family uh, but they were not well off either john's education was minimal and he learned his father's trade at a young age tinker tinker it's a word it's like a manly job because you travel on, you fix people's utensils. Yeah, yeah. but you're called we a call tinker. It tinker. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> ah, ah, can I buy you a drink, sir? Yes. Hey, what do you do? I'm a tinker. I'm a tinker. I'm a tinker. <laughs> <laughs> well, John was baptized as an infant in November on November 30th, 1628. But he wasn't a follower of Christ growing up. In fact, he was this foul-mouthed young dude who loved music. Dan- he was metal, right? But he was unconverted. Yeah. He was. Uh, he loved dancing, popular fiction, and he was just captivated by the world. He, he he really indulged in sin. In fact, he becomes this leader of a group of misfits, right? And he had mm. this reputation in town of just being this worldly tool like people knew him and you know the upright people the church going folk didn't really like him okay and he was when he was what 16 yeah he was drafted into the parliamentary army and though we don't have any records of what he did during his three years of service uh but his time in the military would influence some of his future writings like the holy war uh and after the military he returned to being a tinker in elsto yeah so uh that military did not straighten him out <laughs> you think like that'll because that makes it, it makes you into a man a lot I mean, you go to the military man they they oftentimes straighten you out, but Bunyan was just so twisted around. But he, even in his in his autobiography, right, he talked about <clears throat> even the grace of God in the midst of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though he didn't deserve God's grace, like he tells a story about, uh, he uh, he allowed a another soldier to yes. sleep in his bed or to take his post, take his post, take yeah. his post, and uh, uh, and then the, the the guy got shot in the head. Yeah. So, so so Bunyan was spared. His buddy got the raw deal on that one. Exactly. So it's like, and he's like, I saw the mercy of God. God spared me, but yet I still was not, you know, regenerate. Yeah, no, he wasn't. In fact, uh, it was. It's weird because throughout his youth, right, uh, throughout all of these years before his conversion, even as a kid, he was afflicted with deep, painful conviction over his sins. So he loved sin and he would pursue it, but he had. Deep conviction, even despair. He would have these nightmares, these recurring mm. nightmares uh, about his spiritual condition, but he would not be converted for years. It would take a long time. And that, that's, that happens with a lot of people, actually. Oh, a lot of people. I mean, he actually, if, if you don't mind me sharing, you talked about in the past, uh, your your father. 
right? For uh, 19 years. And 19 years of me preaching the gospel to him. Yeah. yeah and, and then you saw the fruit later, right? It's yeah. a, a lot of it for all of us too, is we hear the gospel, uh, but it takes it. In God's timing, it, mm-hmm. it takes a while before conversion, before regeneration. No, it does. And it, like, it's like – and the Puritans experienced this. They saw this and, they, and they, they, they taught this quite a bit that, you know, you're you're born again in an instant, right? Mm-hmm. But God oftentimes takes time to bring you to that place before he converts you from the initial hearing of the gospel and going through conviction and all of that. Yep. Uh, so Bunyan married his first wife when he was 21. We don't know her name, but we know she was poor and pious. In fact, her dowry only consisted of two Puritan works, Arthur Dent's The Plain Man's Pathway to Heaven and Louis Bailey's The Practice of Piety. It's funny, man. Like she had nothing in the dowry but these two Puritan works. It, it, yeah. It, it, and even Bunyan talks about his father-in-law being this really devout, right. really devout, pious man that instilled like his daughter would – would would uh, brag about how uh, her father was so upright – and would, you know, neighbors would comment and he would be helping his neighbors, right? Yeah, he was a he was a solid dude. Man. But by the way, if you haven't picked up Lewis Bailey's The Practice of Piety, you need to get that. Mm. That's a classic. So uh, pick that up. We'll link to that in the show notes. Uh, together, they had four children and the firstborn, Mary, was born blind. Uh, they were, by all accounts, a poor family with very little to call their own. You know, they're, um, because their first child is named Mary, a lot of people think that's it's a good indicator that his first wife's name was Mary, because oftentimes that would be the case. They would oh, name the, yeah. the, the first daughter after the mother. Well, while John is married, um, he he has these influences, right? And he kind of goes through this personal reformation. Uh, he's not converted, but he begins to live differently. He begins to – he changes his behavior. He begins to talk more about religion. He gets into it, man. He starts mm-hmm. going to, I think, an Anglican church, um, and he gains actually a good reputation. People start like, oh, hey, John's finally cleaned up his act. He's not such a tool anymore. Yeah, he's not uh, – uh, as as one, he talked about uh, a, a loose woman would say, you're the most wretched person. Yeah. Uh, which kind of threw him off guard a yeah, little bit. Yeah, like, I wait think. a minute. Wait, oh, oh. What about you? Oh. She's like, no, you're way worse. No, you're way worse <laughs> with all your cursing. <laughs> the, cur- the cursing really disturbed people in the community. They were like, dang, dude. <laughs> this is the loose woman. <laughs> no, she's like, even I don't talk like that. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's during this time when he's going through a personal reformation and he's beginning to feel better about himself that he runs into these four Baptist women. They're hanging out. They're chilling. They're talking about Jesus and the Christian life. And he hears this and he wants to jump in because he likes to talk about these things yeah. now. But as he begins to talk to them, he can sense these women are different. They have a genuine love for God. They have this joy. Yeah. And that's what I kept seeing when I was not a Christian, but I began to hang out with these Christians. I was like, dang, they have something. There's something really special going on there. Yeah, they're talking about that love for the Lord, right? And mm-hmm. I think, I mean, this is this is a point here about, I mean, these are, these are, these are women that are making an impact. You know right? why they're the, you know why they're the best women? Because uh, they're Baptist. They're women? Baptist women. That's right. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. What's up, ladies? <laughs> so I mean, even now we see, like we see. I mean, it, it, it it's weird to say, uh, because, but I think in our culture, even though we talk about women's rights. Uh, it, there is this sense in evangelicalism of looking down at times, right? Or thinking yeah. that women don't, women aren't able to offer more. I, I'm, trying so word, for, I'm trying to word, I'm trying to word things because the, the hard complementarians have really. We're, we're complementarians, right? But we're soft, we're soft complementarians, right. yes. But some of those complementarians are uh, the raging complementarians. Yes. And it's like, they are so afraid that a woman is going to talk to a man that they, they want to shut it down uh, at all costs. But here we have women, they're not afraid. They're going to, they're going to talk to this dude. He's a guy. He's got a good reputation now. They know who he is, mm-hmm. uh, but they're going to start like really sharing the truth and exhorting him. Mm-hmm. And, uh, man, it like, it does a number on him. And talk about like that, the body of Christ here, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, all parts of the body of Christ. Uh, and so from his grace abound to the chief of sinners, uh, Bunyan writes, but upon a day, the good providence of God called me to Bedford to work on my calling. And in one of the streets of that town, I came where there were three or four poor women sitting at a door in the sun talking about the things of God and being now willing to hear them discourse, I drew near to hear what they had or sorry, what they said, for I was now a brisk talker also myself in the matters of religion. But I may say I heard, but I, uh, but sorry, this is actually really important. I want to make sure I say this right. Right. Uh, But I may say I heard, but understood not for they were far above out of my reach. Their talk was about a new birth, the work of God on their hearts. Also how they were conceived. 
convinced. Or sorry, convinced of their miserable state by nature. They talked how God has visited their souls with his love in the Lord Jesus and with what words and promises they had been refreshed, comforted, and supported against the temptations of the devil. Moreover, they reasoned of the suggestions and temptations of Satan in particular and told to each other by which they had been afflicted and how they were borne up under his assaults. They also discoursed of their own wretchedness of heart and of their unbelief and did contemn. Is that how you pronounce that? Yeah. Contemn, slight and abhor their own righteousness as filthy and insufficient to do them any good. And methought they spake as if joy did make them speak. They spake with such pleasantness of scripture language and with such appearance of grace in all they said that they were to me as if they had found a new world, as if they were people that dwelt alone and were not to be reckoned among their neighbors. That is so beautiful, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like, that's that's the example that we're supposed to have. We're going to be weird. We're going to be different. Yeah, um, we're called to be ambassadors. Right? And, you know, ambassadors that love their kingdom, ambassadors yeah. that love their king, talk about their king. Well, this really shook Bunyan to his core. He knew, I'm not one of these ladies. I'm not one of them. And so he began to seek those ladies out all the more just to have more conversations with them. Yeah, and in 1651, uh, he was introduced to Pastor John Gifford, a Baptist pastor who could relate well to Bunyan. John Giffords? John Giffords. The John Giffords. John Giffords is my jam. John Giffords is my jam. (laughs) (laughs) And so Gifford had a very corrupt past, uh, being very ungodly before his conversion. He was he was a bad dude. Mm -mm. He was a bad dude. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, man, like he could talk to Bunyan. He's like Bunyan, yeah, Bunyan I, understood. Yeah, and he, and he understood Bunyan, so it was a really good fit. Ultimately, it was the example of these women, yeah. the ministry of John Gifford, and Martin Luther's commentary on the Book of Romans that God used to convert John. In 1653, he was baptized by immersion mm-hmm. into the Baptist Church in Bedford, and in 1656, just a few years later, he begins to preach uh, as a deacon, and the people receive it enthusiastically. And in 58, his first wife dies, and it leaves him with with four children. Uh, But a year later, he marries Elizabeth. Rebound. Uh, Oh, (laughs) come on now. (laughs) She's an awesome woman, right? Because she was a strong and godly woman, uh, and they had two more children together. Man, uh, listen, I got to take a break. I love too much Bunyan. I got to slow down here. All right, slow. Yeah. (sighs) We're gorging ourselves on Bunyan. All right, so. Lagos Bible Software. Mm. Lagos Bible Software. You want to read Bunyan? You get Lagos Bible Software. I've Listen, I've got right here on the table, I've got uh, the works of John Bunyan, the three-volume set. Yeah. I read volume one and volume two uh, in the 90s, and I haven't really read volume three because it's a bunch of poetry and stuff. You and, don't want to read the poetry? Uh, some of it, you know, but uh, it's not my thing. So apparently John, you're not going to read I'm, it. I'm not as spiritually minded as John Bunyan. But – this is the kind of stuff that you get in Lagos, plus commentaries and everything else. Well, you guys know we love Lagos. We talk about it all the time. Yeah, we use it all the time. That's I use why it we daily. talk about it all the time. Yeah, right? I every, use it daily. Every, every day. You got DG tonight, right? Discipleship yep. group? I w- I, and I will be using Lagos. And I was using iPad, it for yep. my DG this morning, meeting with the guys. So uh, here's the thing. You maybe you don't know. Maybe you have a, you're have you thinking like, I don't know if it's going to be right for me. Here's what Lagos is doing for you. Go to doc, go to what is it? Lagos.com slash doc Docs. and devo. Yep, doc and devo. Yep. D-O-C-A-N-D-D-E-V-O. Go there and you can download for free Lagos Basic. And it's going to have- like, Lagos 8 Basic. Lagos 8 mm. Basic. It's the newest one. So here's the thing. That's for free. And it'll have like 25 resources that you probably don't have. And that's how you can get familiar with the system. I just got an email today from a guy saying, hey, I got the Lagos Basic that you guys advertised and it's overwhelming. There's too much stuff. I don't know what to do. Can you help me out? Yeah. So- um, and so I'm going to respond to this guy and let him know. So get in on it while you can. Lagos.com slash Doc and Devo. Get Lagos 8 Basic for free. All right. So, um, so okay. So John Bunyan, he, he gets married to a second wife, Elizabeth, in yep. 1659. Well, in 1660, a year later, uh, Homeboy is in prison for preaching without a license. <laughs> of course. What the heck? They got six kids. Yeah. They got, they got a lot. And so she's got to deal with this. Here's the thing. John was in prison for preaching without a license, right? Because mm-hmm. you have, you know, the Church of England, like licensing who can and who can't preach. And he's like, yeah. he's metal. He's like, I don't care. Yeah. I'm a, God's I'll called me to I do want. this. Yeah. I'm doing this. God's called me to do it. I'm going to go. Um, if he just would have stopped preaching, if he would have said, okay, I won't yeah. preach. He just would have done a short little stint, a few months, and they would have been let go. But 
he ain't doing that. He's like, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep preaching. Well, and, I mean, the, the, well, it begs the question that should he have refused to stop for the sake of his family? Well, it was only from 1660 to 1672. It's not that long. It's 12 years. 12 years, bro. Okay. <laughs> oh for the gosh. sake of his family. <laughs> it's a good question, right? I, I, people actually talk about that. Like, yeah. Because he's not, they're not telling him to deny Jesus. No. They're not telling him that he can't talk about Jesus. Yeah. Uh, that they're just saying, you, you can't preach, you're not a licensed preacher. And so I think it's a good question to ask, but like, he was convinced God's called me to do this. I'm going to do this. And so his wife, Elizabeth, backed him all the way. Mm. And and not only did she back him all the way, she constantly would appeal to the governing authorities, let my husband go. Like uh, she would, she was really going at it, trying to get him released. Didn't work. So while he was in prison to help his family, uh, you know, meet ends, uh, he would make and sell shoelaces. Which right there in prison. I guess that's, you know, you could do that sort of a thing. And while in prison, he wrote more than nine treatises and tracts. Uh, and it was cool because there was this guard there who would let him sneak out to preach at these unlawful assemblies. <laughs> so, like, even the guards were like, yeah, man, go ahead. Like, we'll, just, we'll get you out of here. You go do your thing. Mm-hmm. And so Bunyan would go out. Um, and what I just think is super cool, when Bunyan was in prison, he would MacGyver the stuff in his room and turn it into musical instruments because he loved music and he could play. And so he made a uh, a musical instrument out of iron. He made a flute from a leg of one of the stools in his cell because wow. he's a tinker. And yeah. He knows how to do that stuff. It's just, <laughs> he's just, I bet he made, he made a lot of hay while he was in prison. Yeah. In 1666, uh, his autobiography uh, is published, which is Grace Abounding to the Chief you gotta read of that. Sinners. So good. Really, really good. Uh, in 1672, the king issued the Act of Indulgence, which decriminalized nonconforming preaching. Oh. So he's released from prison. Finally. And then he's called to be a, uh, the pastor of Bedford Church. But. Yeah. It was great. Uh, Perfect. Finally. Freedom. Yeah. Uh, Ooh, it, breathe it, easy, John. <laughs> but in 1675, a warrant is issued for his arrest uh, for not attending a parish church. You see what the fundies do? <laughs> so, I, fundies I, in every generation. Yeah. So the warrant's issued, but in in 77, he's in prison for six months because of not attending the parish church. I just got out. Two years, he's out, and they mm. put him right back in. I mean, six months, man. That may not sound like a long time when you're comparing it to 12 years, but how about you get locked up for six months? Yeah, yeah. Well, a year later, uh, Pilgrim's Progress is published, at least part one is. In 1682, The Holy War is published. So their allegorical work in 1684, Pilgrim's Progress Part Two is published. Bunyan is becoming this famous preacher in his day, not a celebrity pe- preacher where people fawn all over him and he, you know, he's making all this money and he's a big wig, but he was a preacher that everybody wanted to hear. In fact, there was another John who loved to hear John Bunyan. Piper? No, no, but uh, he was born just after Bunyan's death. <laughs> You're so proud of yourself. I am. <laughs> no, John Owen. <laughs> oh, John oh. Owen loved the John Owens. The John Owens. Oh, John Owens is my jam. Man. Well, actually, Spurgeon had this to say, and this was how a lot of people felt about Bunyan. Spurgeon said, read anything of Bunyan's and you will see that it's almost like reading the Bible itself. He had read it till his very soul was saturated with scripture. And though his writings are charmingly full of poetry, yet he cannot give us his pilgrim's progress, that sweetest of all prose poems, without continually making us feel and say, why, this man is a living Bible. Prick him anywhere and his blood is Bibline. The very essence of the Bible flows from him. He cannot speak without quoting the text, for his very soul is full of the word of God. Mm. Man. So by the time Bunyan was 59... He is England's most famous author. Well, in uh, 1688, Bunyan went to Reading, Berkshire, to help a father and son work through some conflict. So even though he's the most famous author, as you're talking about, yeah. uh, he understood that the real work of the pastor is shepherding people. Yeah. It's not about the the preaching's good. Right. The studying's good. Uh, but it's it's about working with people right. through conflict, through pain, through joy, uh, through whatever circumstance that they are in. You know, it's like I think Jimmy and I would both say that preaching is like the the most public thing that we do, mm-hmm. and it's critically important. I mean, it, you you can't remove that's of the essence of pastoral ministry, but that only takes up so much of the time. The bulk of our time is yeah. with people, like you said, that's right. and uh, you know, people forget that. Even uh, you know, uh, redheaded. Headbanger uh, John Bunyan was meeting with people, father and son at odds, and he's like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop. I'm, 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 I'm on it." So he goes there, right? But from there, he went to London to see his friend uh, John Strudwick of Snow Hill. But to do that, he had to travel through a storm, and in the storm, he got very sick. He got a fever, and he died at his friend's house on August thirtieth, sixteen eighty-eight. He was sixty years old. 
Uh, John Bunny is buried in Bun Hill Fields in London. Is it Bunny Hill or Bun Hill? Bun Hill. Bunny Hill? No, Bun Hill. Bunny Hill. No, no, not. Yeah, I think it's Bunny Hill. Yeah, no, Bun yeah, Hill. Definitely Bun Hill. Um, all right. So, what are some takeaways from 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 John Bunyan, man? What what's something that stands out to you where you're like, man, Bunyan's legit. Yeah, I think that first off, uh, Bunyan was a serious theologian and a preacher right. who always sought to connect doctrine and devotion. It's oh, not he, only yeah. about you know uh, right thinking, mm-hmm. but uh, right affections. Right, and from that. Right living. I mean, yeah. and this is was why we had call our podcast Doctrine and Devotion because and the Puritans were the, the best at this after the apostles. They were the best. They would show they had a lot of problems in in in, in their in their expression of the faith and, and they, their blind spots. But man, they were really good at showing the connection between the theology that is revealed in God's word and the experience to the Christian life and piety that yeah. is supposed to come. It, it, I, one of the things that is important to note about John is that uh, Bunyan today is rejected by a lot of Baptists. <clears throat> Mark Dever, uh, because <laughs> of his view on open communion and open membership. Okay. Right. So he wrote this treatise, um, uh, Differences in Judgment About Water Baptism, No Bar to Communion. Lovely title, John. Um, <laughs> so, Very succinct. Yeah, it's, just, it's, it's super clear. Um, but basically what he's arguing in that is you can be a Presbyterian who's been baptized as an infant – and come to my Baptist church and you're allowed to the Lord's table. Yeah. You can even join the church because even though you have a difference of opinion and Bunyan would say it's wrong. It, Bunyan would say infant baptism is a sin. John Bunyan was like full on reformed Baptist, but he would say, but I'm not going to let that be a barrier to you fellowshipping with us. We're going to do it our way, Yeah, but you can join with us. And uh, a lot of people don't like that. They, uh, they really struggle with that. And a lot, in fact, a lot of Baptists today, you know, um, are arguing for open membership where mm. they're going to only practice uh, believers baptism, but they will admit people into membership who have been sprinkled as a baby. And, you know, people want to say, this is crazy. This is crazy. And maybe it is, but they're not, just pulling this out of nowhere. I mean, this yeah. is something that John Bunyan was articulating. And listen, there were most of the Baptists of his day disagreed with him as well. So, you know, he could be wrong in this, but just know uh, it's not coming out of nowhere. This is something that's been around for a while. Yeah. I mean, I think another thing that sticks out is uh, Bunyan was willing to suffer for following God's call. I mean, 12 years, Jeez. 12 years. I mean, I, I, that's hard time. That's. I mean, he wasn't in the gulag. I mean, it was it was it was a nicer jail situation. No, but you're still than separated. You're yeah. putting your family through this, and as you talk about, you know, uh, seeking and striving for ways to provide for your family, because at that time, what 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 what's his family going to do? Well, he doesn't have like uh, like a like royalties coming in on book deals or anything. No, oh, I, don't I, don't know. Know. I guess I don't know not that. that. Nope. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> so. He didn't have like uh, what do they call it the rabbi fund to help him in with his pension. Like, uh, like, no, no, J Mac wasn't uh, oh, setting things set up that at up that yet. point. Not yet. Yeah. You know what else I think about Bunyan is I think that, um, he's a guy clearly that saw the value in creative writing, allegory, fiction, poetry, as it relates to theological truth. In fact, in the volume three that I don't really have. I'm about read, to say, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. glad that that stuck out to you yeah. as someone that doesn't find yeah, well, the value in his poetry. Out. It's, it's like, man, he really got into it. He has this whole thing in there where he, he makes these. Um, allegories and they, I think they rhyme uh, where he'll he'll it's all about teaching your kids about God and the truth but he looks into nature and he'll 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 make an analogy he'll like, look at the robin see what the robin does and then he'll make an analogy to a truth in scripture it's pretty cool stuff you mm. should check that out that'd be good what are some stuff that, that people can read if they want to start reading uh, on Bunyan uh, where can they uh, where can they start yeah, what, what, think- are, what, what's something that you've read that you really like yeah I mean I really like uh, the Pilgrim's Progress I mean that's definitely something that that uh, I, I highly recommend. Uh, Grace Abounded to the Chief of Sinners, uh, his autobiography. Uh, it, it's really good. Some insight into his thinking and, and his thought process and his heart. Uh, and then his book on prayer called Prayer is, is another uh, resource that I would highly recommend. What about you, Joe? What, what are some books that you would recommend? Uh, his treatise on the fear of the Lord is awesome. Uh, it's really, really good. Um, uh, definitely read Differences in Judgment about Water Baptism. That's uh, No Bar to Communion. Read that. That's that's great. Be sure and read his Come and Welcome to Jesus Christ. And it's basically his unpacking of the process to conversion. That's really good. And and I'm going to say, if you if you want to get serious, man, pick up the three volumes. Yeah. Pick up his collected work. It's not that expensive. It's totally worth it. And they look cool on your shelf. So oh, there's yeah. a bonus on get that. Get it. Uh, get that. Volume one is my favorite volume out of all of them. Then volume two. And then, you know, I haven't really read a whole lot. I haven't read right. volume two. Uh, I've read Pilgrim's know. Progress. But, uh, but that, that's about that's it. That's about it yeah, for you. Yeah, I don't really, <laughs> don't really do a whole lot. So listen, 
Um, we want to do more uh, more stories, right? We did the John Bunyan story. Who should we do next? What's another Baptist figure? We want to kind of focus on some of the Baptist figures. We'll do others, but like, let us know who you think we should talk about, and uh, we'll do a recap on some famous Baptists of the past. Well, we'd love to hear your thoughts. You can follow us online on Instagram and Twitter at Doc and Devo or on Facebook slash Doctrine and Devotion. You can head to the website, DoctrineVotion.com. There you can contact us. You can sign up for the email blast or hit up the store, JoeFoStore.com and grab some gear. Joe, you know what's coming up? Canasta? Uh, well, no, no, no. Canasta? We, no, in May. Oh. We've got the Doctor Devotion Conference on May Biblical. May 3rd and 4th. On Biblical Theology. May 3rd and 4th. There you go. Good job. May yeah. 3rd and 4th. May and you know who's going to be there? Well, I'm going to be there. And... You're going to be there. And James Hamilton's guest, James <laughs> Hamilton, is going to be there. And Logos. Oh, yeah. Logos is going to be there. Logos is going to be there. They're going to be offering some discounts. But for now, you can head on over to Logos.com slash Doc and Devo and grab yourself Logos 8 for free. But if they want to register for the conference, where do they go? You go to DrVotion.com slash conference Ooh. fresh pod every monday and thursday blog post on wednesdays video content on fridays later 